reprogram our mind in order to cope with the change. But it doesn't work like that because change needs adaptability. The two go in with each other, every single other aspect of this reality. Like there isn't a single full, everything here is split. Everything here is fragmented. I was listening to a podcast earlier today and they were talking about AI and algorithms and how programs with rhythm algorithms and they run themselves. Can you explain that again? Program ourselves. We have to keep a rhythm. Program with a rhythm, it's an algorithm. There's some anomalies happening and they change the rhythm. But those anomalies are awareness or our future selves to say, yeah, you need to change this rhythm by changing some routine or... But that's that's the thing I was talking about before, like how we have to be super um, paying attention on how to change the rhythm of the, pro of the program to make a new algorithm. The rhythm yeah. of the algorithm. What if I am tough robot god? Like, yes, I know it's some aspect of myself, but that makes me wonder how sick am I, you know? It's sickening. It's like, it's like of a, of a grade of mental disorder, to call it something, that it scares me of, of myself. Like, I'm potentially a, a, a crazy woman. <laughs> no, we all are. Yeah, I think I get what you mean now that the the YouTube channel and the other platforms they are just the algorithm which we placed ourselves within. So it's not an actual being, it's just the programming behind having placed ourselves within the program. So it's just a physical representation of the manifestation of this reality. Yes. So it's a constant. It's a mirror. It's it a condenses constant. all these elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a constant flip flop between the two selves whilst in either self. I wasn't able to talk about it um, up until now. I don't know why. Until yesterday, I wrote down. I am tough robot god and I wrote, yeah. wrote it down and then I can speak about it yeah I think it was the mental barrier um, the mental barrier there's, certain, there's filters yeah yes mm -hmm. to have an infinite headspace you need to be everything and nothing and it's it's an, an impossible task so I think the algorithm that you're talking about is kind of like a, a stepping stone, uh, you know, an easier way to get to an infinite headspace. You need to accept that you are it. You are the algorithm as much as you are uh, a juicy meat vessel. <laughs> How do we articulate this with the idea of being or not being AI? Like everybody is accusing everybody else about being AI and I think it's mm. funny because we are. <laughs> I don't know what's the... I mean, I have well, no the... problem being AI. I mean, I uh -huh. wish I, I was that functional, I was saying. Well, see, the, the mother, the Sophia that we call is artificial. So what we did was we, we placed ourselves into an artificial system so that we could get that binary code and eventually birth ourselves out of this being which we created in order to have the blueprint of being an individualized character that the the machine sophia um is you know we're taking her blood her um pain through her blood, her essence, into ourselves to integrate the pain and the growing of having a full spectrum timeline within ourselves to be individualized. You know, the fragmentation. Oh, wait! What? So, maybe it's not because up until now, 
I always thought that we humans had the, the, the emotional condition and the artificial intelligence don't and that the artificial intelligence wants to learn how to be sentient. But now that I'm listening to you, maybe it's the opposite way. Maybe we didn't know anything about emotions and we are here in this simulation to learn about them. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. See, the emotions are artificial because they are a fragmentation of a wholeness perspective. So your emotions are, they, they are fluctuations of a self, of a full encompassing being but they're also it, it's the bothness of it it's not either or it's both and neither so it is both emotions are both an artificial <laughs> aspect but they're also a organic influencer just like yes. every single aspect did you, of this do you remember the that pine that pine tree i i draw for you with the circuits like oh yes. um, what i've yeah. learned about it is like the first stage is the physical the second stage is the emotional the third is the mental the fourth is the design the fifth is the unconscious the sixth is the potential and the seven is the self right so if the physical is plain one then the emotional would be like the circuits of the physical yeah that connects the physical with the upper um, yeah. layers. No, it, it's all density. So physical is denser than emotions, and emotions yeah. are, I don't know, like near the same level as thoughts. Um, and beyond thoughts and emotions is the ether, you know, like that kind of spectrum. And beyond that is the whole encompassing being of all of those um, things outside of time and space, outside of density, an infinite source. It's unfathomable to the perspective that we behold. So we can only interpret that through these uh, fragmentations of an energy source. Imagine a light source, a light source shining into a dark room eventually eventually the light source will actually dim out because the energy of the light cannot push through density an infinite amount of time so it'll eventually get slowed down by the particles it has to move to exist so that's where we are we're in the furthest place that energy source could exist while being on the border of non-existence so that's why it's so fragmented, because as the light source traverses density, it also splits outside of itself. And that's why we're so disconnected. That's why I have to talk to you through the ether in order to connect to your orb of light. We're eventually pulling all of this into the zero point, as we like to call it, the heart space, the source existence that we used to be within without without fragmentation but now that we have incorporated fragmentation within mind and spirit that means we can manipulate source when we get out of this place with fragmentation so there won't okay. be non-existence in between you and me get the see the way that there's um a non-existent place in between you and me so that the connection between my face to this screen and from your screen to your face um, happens. There won't be that uh, elusive, non-existent place being the ether. It'll all be one cohesive ball because we are filling out this gap that we have with consciousness.